In today's video, we're gonna be learning about MIDI recording in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now if you're a beginner and you'd like to learn how to record MIDI in Cakewalk by BandLab, I will be taking you through the steps to do that in today's video. But first of all, if this is your first time here and you like this kind of content, all about DAWs, home recording, plugins, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to see my future videos. Now let's get to learning all about Cakewalk by BandLab and MIDI. Okay, so I want to start off by clearing up some confusion that I see amongst beginners about what MIDI actually is. Now in Cakewalk and other DAWs, there are basically two types of things that you can record. That is audio and MIDI information. Now there's some terminology which gets used in Cakewalk which confuses us a little bit, but I'll explain that later. Let's start off with audio. When you record audio tracks, you're recording actual sound. For example, you may be recording a guitar which is recorded with a microphone or a voice which is recorded with a microphone. And you can see that here in the session that I've got open. You can see the waveform here, and that is the uh, guitar. In fact, I'll just play it so we can hear it. And that was recorded with a microphone. Now, if we go down a little bit further here, you'll see another type of track down here. And this is what I call a MIDI track. It's actually called an instrument track in Cakewalk, but essentially it's MIDI information which is being recorded. Now, if I click on that and it expands, this is some bass guitar MIDI. Now, what's important here is no actual sound is being recorded. Let me say that again, there is no sound recorded with a MIDI or instrument track. In fact, what's happening is, is we are recording a series of events or instructions, if you like. Instructions like start playing the middle C note now, stop playing it now, play it this loud, etc. Then when you hit play on your DAW, Cakewalk in this case, it actually plays the instrument back again. Now, that instrument may be a virtual instrument, which is in your DAW, and that's what we're gonna be focusing on today, or it may be an external instrument, such as a synthesizer or a drum machine, which is plugged into your computer. That's for another tutorial. We're gonna be focusing on what everybody has, and that is the virtual instruments, which come with Cakewalk. Okay, so let's go about adding a MIDI track to our Cakewalk project. Now I'm starting off on the Cakewalk start screen and I've already created some projects before so they show here and with the recent projects tab selected. But I'm actually gonna click on the new project tab over here and then I'm gonna go over and click on the empty project template. So I'll click on that and that creates an empty project. Now, there are a couple of different ways of adding MIDI or instrument tracks to Cakewalk. I'm just gonna do one way today so I don't confuse you, but there are some different ways to do it so you're aware. I'm gonna look over here on the right-hand side and you'll see some different tabs here, media, plugins, and notes. So we're gonna select the plugins tab and then we're gonna go over to where this little sort of keyboard icon is here and we're gonna click on that and that shows the uh, virtual instrument plugins which are installed on our system. Now, the list may look a bit different for you, so I encourage you to go up to this little arrow here and select, uh, let's have a look, sort by manufacturer. Now, if we click on sort by manufacturer, your, you, your display should look similar to this. There may be some missing. But the one you should have is this one here, which is Cakewalk. So we'll expand that by clicking on the plus, and then we're actually gonna take this Cakewalk TTS1 plugin, and we're gonna grab it and drag it all the way across to the left-hand side and drop it there. Now, a pop-up appears at this time, and we are gonna make sure that we just have simple instruments track selected and none of the other things, none of the other checkbox are selected. I click on OK. Now what that does is it creates an audio track for the output of the TTS plugin and it also creates a MIDI track alongside it here to actually trigger that plugin. 
So I'm going to just drag this down a little bit so that we can see all of the options there. Now it says Cakewalk TTS1 up here as the name of the track and right next to that is a little icon which I'll click on and that brings up the actual plugin, the Cakewalk TTS1 plugin. Now this plugin can actually load up to 16 instruments at one time but by default it loads up the piano instrument on all but one of these one of them actually just has a drum instrument on there but all of them have the piano uh, instrument loaded up and we're just going to leave it like that for now so that we can just have a nice piano sound so i'll close that there and then we're going to go on to set up a metronome ready for recording now in terms of setting up the metronome, there's a couple of things we want to do. We want to make sure we can hear it when we're recording, and we also want to make sure that the tempo of the track is set correctly. Now to set the tempo, there's one easy way to do it. If you happen to know, for example, that the track is 90 beats per minute, you can just click up here where the tempo is, and I'll click on that, and I can just type in 90 and set it. But you may not be sure what the tempo is. So what I would do in this case is make sure that the playhead here is set right back to the beginning of the track. So I've just dragged it there to the beginning of the track. So everything's on zero. And I'm gonna insert a new tempo there. So I do that by going up to the project menu. So I click on project and then going down to insert tempo change. I'll click on that and this pop-up appears. Now, so if I'm not sure what tempo it's going to be, what I can do is click on this button here for probably, I don't know, at least a few seconds, uh, a little bit more than that to set a tempo. So I'm going to do that now. and it's worked out to about 71 beats per minute. So I'll click on OK, and my metronome is set to 71 beats per minute. Now, if I click play, we don't hear anything, so we can't double check that. In that case, what we need to do is go over to the metronome icon here, and I'll click on that, and it brings up the metronome settings. And if I wanna hear it on playback, I need to make sure that I've clicked here for playback. Now. I also want to make sure, of course, that I hear it when I'm recording. So do double check here that it is selected for recording. I'll click on apply and close that window. And now when I hit play, I should hear the metronome. There it is. And I'm almost ready to record my MIDI track. So now that we have our track and we have our metronome set up, we now have to select a way to input actual note information. Now there's gonna be two categories of people here. Those who have a keyboard of some sort, which you can see in front of me here. Now that may be a synthesizer, electric piano, or just a MIDI keyboard controller, which is connected to your computer. And those of you who don't yet have a keyboard, if you're just starting out, it's quite likely you don't have a keyboard. I'm just gonna deal with that group first quickly and show you how you can actually input notes using your computer keyboard. What you will need to do, where the input selector is here for the instrument, I'm just gonna click on that, and I'm gonna go down to where it says virtual controller and then select MIDI Omni. Now, after I've done that, I need to go up to Views and then go all the way down to Virtual Controllers here and open up that and select Computer Keyboard. Now, when this window which is opened is selected, I can now play actual notes on my computer keyboard. So as you can see there, I could use that to actually record notes into my DAW. The problem with it is, of course, well, there's lots and lots of problems with it. It's going to be very hard to play full piano pieces in real time using just a piano keyboard. Um, and it doesn't record things like velocity and it doesn't do a great job of um, doing things like pitch bend and modulation. So it is only really useful if you're really stuck and you don't have a keyboard and you just want to get on and make some of your first music. But I do highly recommend getting an actual physical keyboard. They're not that expensive these days. So I'm going to put some links down in the description to a couple of keyboards that I've used in the past which I'd recommend which aren't all that expensive and they are by far much better than using your actual computer keyboard. Now, if you do already have a keyboard, you'll have it connected up to your computer either with MIDI cables going into your audio interface 
or perhaps a USB cable connected to your computer. It's going to be different for each person. Now, you should have set this up already in your preferences, and I did cover this in my sort of Cakewalk Basics video about how to set up MIDI uh, devices, and you should have some selected here in this menu. If you don't, then I recommend go ahead and watch that uh, setup video which I created. Now, what you'll need to do, instead of selecting for your input the virtual controller, you'll actually need to select whatever hardware you have connected. Now, my uh, controller is actually connected via MIDI, MIDI cables to my UA25 interface. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to select MIDI Omni so that it gets um, information from any MIDI channel. That's for another tutorial indeed. Now we are ready to record this piano and I can now play it on my piano keyboard. Okay, so we're all set up and we're ready to record. Now, to start recording this piano track, we're first of all gonna have to select this red circle here on the track, hit that and that arms it ready for recording. So you can see this big red area over here also indicates that. Now all we have to do to record is actually hit on the record button up here. I'm gonna let it play for about a bar or so just to give myself a little breathing space. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that was kind of okay. There was a couple of bits in it which I wasn't quite happy with. My use of the sustain pedal wasn't quite right, and we're going to go in how to fix. We're going to go into how to fix those things a little later. So let's have a listen to that recording. I'm just going to move the play head up to where it starts, and I'm going to hit the play button. Okay, that seems to have worked okay. Now it is still playing the metronome on playback and I don't like that, so I'm just gonna click on the metronome settings button here and turn that off here by deselecting playback there, clicking apply and closing that. And now we can listen to the piano without the metronome. And that all works fine. Now I just want to go into something about this record button up here because we have several different options. If we wanted to record over this and sort of wipe it out as we were going, then we would just leave this on the setting it is now. But if we hold left click on that button, we can see some different options. And I just want to look at the sound on sound option. We'll click that. And what I'm going to do is uh, give myself some time again. I'm going to move the playhead back to the beginning. I'm going to show you how you can record over with a little piano part at the top end of the piano. Let's have a go at that. Okay, you can see how that's working. So now if I move the play ahead to here and play again. Now, as you can see in Cakewalk here, the uh, second recording is placed on top of the first one. I'm just gonna select that and then I'm gonna hit shift on my keyboard and select the other one. And now I'm gonna right click on all of that and click on bounce to clips. And now we can see both parts together there. So both of those piano parts are showing on the display there. Now I'm gonna show you how to go into that and actually edit it. Okay, so now that we've recorded our piano, I'm gonna go in and actually edit the MIDI. So I will disarm the track for recording. So I'll select that there. I'm gonna go ahead and select this uh, section here, which is the MIDI notes. I'm actually gonna double click on that at the top. 
And that opens up what is called the piano roll, which I am obscuring with my camera at the moment. So I'll move myself up the top there. And I'm actually just gonna take the top part of this and drag it up a little. So that makes that a little bit bigger. In fact, I could go a bit further than that, couldn't I? I'll move that up there and I'll drag this all the way up like that. So that makes that display nice and big. Okay, so we can see on the left here, the piano notes and we can use the scroll on our mouse to scroll up and down. Now the information we have over here, as I explained at the beginning of the video, is the MIDI information. This shows where a note starts and where it ends, and it shows the pitch of the note. Now down here also you can see this is selected for velocity, and we can see the velocity of the different notes, and we can change them down here. Now. I should point out in Cakewalk here, I actually have the Smart tool selected. So right at the top on the left hand side, I have this star icon selected. That means as I roll over each note, some different uh, options appear. So if I'm right in the middle of the note, I can use that then if I hold the left mouse button down to drag the note up and down. Just like so. I'll put it back to where it was. And if it's over to the uh, left, I can actually change just the start position of the note, which leaves the end position intact. And also, of course, I can then also drag out the end position of the note. The other thing that I can do is actually change the velocity. So if I go over here and I select this note, I can then actually go down here. And if I'm hovering at the top of that velocity, I can drag it up and make it very loud. I'll play that. Play it from here. And yeah, that's a very loud, sudden bass note there. Play again. If I wanted to make it quieter, I'll just drag it all the way down and have a listen now. Okay, so that is how you're gonna edit the basic things on your piano roll here. This is the most useful thing about MIDI, in my opinion, that you can change the odd fumbled note that you got or the note that you played a little bit too loud or too long. Now, I also would like to point out here that I was using the sustain pedal. So if I click here, that is on this thing called CC64, which is um, where sustain is transmitted in MIDI. And if I drag that up, I can also go in and change the uh, sustain point. So this is a very uh, handy section indeed. If you find that you didn't quite use that sustain pedal in just the right places, you can go around, go around and uh, actually drag the uh, start points of that. Now, there are lots of options on the piano roll, which I will go through next. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through all of the options that we have here, but I'm gonna go through the main ones which are gonna help you out if you're just starting out here. The first thing I wanna draw your attention to is this part over here where it says 132, just below where I am on the screen there and slightly out of view. Um, now that where it says 132, it might say something different for you, is highlighted with a sort of a solid orange color. This is the sort of snap control. So if I just click that so that it goes to a dull orange, that turns snapping off. That means when I come over and want to drag a note, I can freely drag it anywhere just like this, and it will not be placed in a very precise position. This is really actually very good if you wanna have things which sound reasonably natural. If you don't want to put them on exactly the beat, um, then this can be quite handy. So you can learn how to use that just by dragging it slightly off the line, etc. Now, if you do think want things to be very accurate and you want to snap them in place, then you want to make sure that that's selected. So if I select that now and drag it around, it's going to snap to one thirty seconds of the bar. So in other words, if I want to snap it to each beat of a 4-4 bar, I would actually hold left on this and then select this setting, 1-4. So I'll do that. And now it will snap to beats. Now you'll notice here that I can actually drag it freely in between, but it will just snap when it gets close to the actual beats. So I can just go a little bit in between, but as I get closer, 
it snaps to that beat. So that's very handy indeed for if you're doing a mixture of very accurate notes and then you want to slightly offset some things. You don't have to keep going up here and changing that. So that is one of the main settings in this interface and that is the snap setting. So I'm going to set it to say something more like uh, eighths and then I can drag that around. Now the other thing that you can actually do is add new notes and you can do this a couple of different ways. You can go in and just use this tool and drag out a note like so and it will snap its beginning position according to the snap setting and it will also snap the end position as well according to that. So I can actually put in a note just like that. The other thing you can do is just select say a beat and double click and that has added a note in there. Now it's added the note according to the settings I've got up here for the note length. So that's the last thing that I wanna show you here. You select the note length, the default note length for adding notes up here. So if I just wanna add in a crotchet, I'll just select crotchets there and double click on a beat and it's added that in. In actual fact, it's added a dotted crotchet because I had uh, dotted selected. So I'll deselect that, go again and double click. Okay, so that is the sort of basic settings or the basic options for editing MIDI. Now the last thing I want to touch upon is called quantizing. Now quantizing is a process where you adjust the start and maybe the end times of the notes according to specific timings within each bar. Meaning, imagine you could place a grid over the bar and divide it into four. What quantizing will then do is look at the start time of the note and move it exactly to one of those four lines on a grid. You may set it to eight or 16, etc., etc. It depends on the actual music. We'll go into this a little bit further in a moment. At the moment, you can see that in actual fact, if I zoom in to the beginning of these notes here, which I played on the keyboard, you can see, for example, these three notes here are just a little bit before the beat. Some of these later are on the beat and maybe some of them are a little bit after. With quantizing, we are going to put them exactly in time as if I was this amazing piano player who could play uh, perfectly in time. I am, of course. So what we do is we can select our track up here and I'll select it to highlight it. And that selects all of the notes in the track. And I hit Q on the keyboard and that brings up the quantizing interface. Now, at the moment, the resolution is set to 1 16th. I happen to know that's just right. That is a way of saying if you take the whole bar and you divided it into 16, that's the resolution that the quantizer is going to use to determine where to move the beginning or the end of the note to. Now, talking about the beginning and the ending, down here with change, we can say, see it's set to uh, change start times. You also have the ability to change the end times or the note duration. I normally don't have that set. Normally I'm just interested in changing the start times. Now I've set it to 1 16th and I'm gonna click on OK. And you see all of those notes just shuffled around there. So if I play it now, Okay, that's okay, maybe not quite what I wanted, but I will undo that. Now, if I had not selected the right uh, resolution, I'll hit Q again, and let's say I'll put it on 1 8th. Click on OK, and you can see it's really messed things up there, and that's because the resolution wasn't high enough. So what you can actually do, if you're not sure, is select a resolution. I'll put it back to 1 16th, and we can audition. And that will give you an idea if you've made the right selection. Now, the other thing that you can do is only quantize certain notes. So I actually selected the whole track up here in the track view. So if we go down here to the piano view and I right drag across this group of notes, 
that's a right drag, I'll use that to select them and I'll hit Q on the keyboard to bring up the quantize and I'll click on OK because I like the settings. It only actually changes the notes which I've selected. So please do remember you don't actually have to quantize the whole track. You can just do parts of it if you wish. So I really hope that helps get you started with your journey of recording MIDI in Cakewalk. If anything wasn't clear to you at all, then please do ask questions in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer each and every one of them. Now, if you did like this video, help me out by hitting the like button. If you didn't like this video at all, then hit the dislike button twice. If you like this kind of content, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now talking about my other videos, I think that you should have a go at one of these two showing on the screen just now with the lovely yellow background. And I'll see you in the next video.